I was asked to talk a little bit about my background. And um, next time I'm going to say, Sachi, don't read all <laughs> the bio. <laughs> because really the most important thing for me right now is being, being back here at home in the county where I started. This is where I got my start. I grew up in the San Gabriel Valley, attended public school, grew up in a small community in the unincorporated area, LA County, La Puente Valinda. So I know, I know what it means to be a part of the unincorporated area of LA County. Uh, and really, um, it was quite an experience growing up. One that was uh, fascinating for me and opportunities that presented themselves and challenges while I was growing up. I'm the first of seven children to go to college in my family. My parents came to this country many years ago as immigrants and both worked very hard to raise their children to realize the American dream. They left war and torn countries, one in Mexico, one in Central America. But they gave us the belief and that value of coming to this country, being able to be born here and realize the potential of yourself. That to me was very important and something that has brought me to where I am today. Never forgetting my roots, but never forgetting who I need to remember. And when I say remember, it's about the community, the communities that I represent. So growing up in the San Gabriel Valley was a, was a unique experience and it wasn't always easy. Mom and dad would struggle, but they made a point of, of making sure that their children completed school. They didn't know anything about college, however, um, and at one point, I, I almost didn't go to college because, believe it or not, in some of our schools at that time, there weren't a lot of youngsters from my area that were actually told that women could actually go on to college. In fact, there was a high school counselor who said, well, maybe you should become a clerk. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being a secretary. But I wanted to go on to college. So 40 years later, I can go back to that high school and say, guess what? Maybe in part that was true, because I will always retain the title of Secretary of Labor. <laughs> Secretary of Labor. And I don't say that facetiously because there are so many people that I've run across that have told me from all walks of life, Hilda, that story resonates with me because that's what I was told. Women are always constantly being underestimated and always being told, it's not your turn, step back, think about it or let somebody else take that role or that leadership or that job because you know, you're not ready yet. Well, who says you're not ready? If you're ready and you prepare yourself and you have uh, talents and skills that you think you can share, in my opinion, I think women should take that chance and take that risk. And that's exactly what I did. And the, and the most important thing for me is feeling comfortable with that. And it takes a while to gain that confidence because we don't always see role models. You don't always see women that you can look up and say, gee, that's the, that's the job I want because we still are, are very highly underrepresented. Even though we're, we're touting our current accomplishments in the county, we still have a ways to go. We don't represent enough, we don't see enough women, especially women of color represented at high levels of cabinet positions and that means across the board, but also in elected office and also in our streams of government and Fortune 500 companies. So we still have to do better, but I'm not gonna hold that against anyone and I don't think we should hold it against ourselves. I think we have to decide and set our goals and then do everything we can to try to get there. And that means along the way, working with other people. Some of the best mentors I had were not female. In fact, the counselor that did give me the encouragement to go on to college was disabled, but he was also someone who, who was concerned and cared about seeing someone like myself focusing her energy in the right direction. And without his help, his name was Mr. Sanchez, I probably wouldn't be here because he saw something. He saw something in me, an energy, a drive, uh, a value of wanting to make a difference. And he said, Hilda, instead of just squandering it, focus that attention and, and put it towards your education. You can do much more and be much more effective for your community if you work towards your education and then you can give back. And he was absolutely right. He was absolutely right. And even when I completed my education at, at Cal Poly Pomona, 
and I'm proud of that. At those, in those years, I could get, you could get out in four years. But I went on a, almost like, I want to say, I, I went because there were programs that gave opportunities to people like me. First in my family, first generation. I didn't know I was low income, but we were low income. I qualified for federal financial aid, for the guaranteed student loan programs, for work study. All of those coming together helped me be who I am. They gave me opportunities to work on campus. They, I got involved in student government. I learned not to be shy. When I was growing up, I was very shy. I was the middle kid in a family of seven. So it's hard to gain that confidence. Sometimes you have to leave that setting to go outside to figure out who you are. And that's what it taught me. So my education, very valuable for me. But it took me and led me to other travels around, around this country. And lo and behold, I ended up going to USC in a master's program because I think in the back of my mind, I did want to escape. I did want to get away. I wanted to see new things. And my mother, I'll never forget, told me, why in the world do you want to go 3,000 miles away to Washington, D.C., where nobody knows you? Here you have a home. Here you have comfort. You'll be OK, Hilda. Why do you need to go there? And I said, no, Mom, I got to go. I have this drive inside, inside of me to do something more. I don't know what it is. I didn't know what it was at that time, but it was to help to provide improvement in public policy, in government, in shaking things up. And so a long story short, I ended up working there, came back, ran for local office, Rio Hondo Community College, which was my first kind of attempt to run for public office. And that's not really what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a public administrator. That's what I got my training in. But friends and people that I met encouraged me to go on to seek public office. And I was petrified. I'll never forget. But lo and behold, that was one start. And after that, the trajectory trajectory continued. I ran for state assembly, and people told me I couldn't do it. I ran for state senate, and people said, you're too young. What do you bring to the table? You don't have enough experience. And I won. When I ran for Congress, I took on an incumbent who had been there for 18 years. They said, you got to be crazy, Hilda. People are not going to support you. And guess what? I won by 69% of the vote. And while I was in Congress, I met another outstanding senator who was also minority from Chicago, Senator Barack Obama. And our offices at the time were working on similar legislation regarding the environment, regarding health care disparities, regarding workforce training, regarding many of the things that he has espoused in his administration, we were working on together. And then he wins his election, and I get a call, uh, I think it was in December, um, and he was compiling his, his list of people he was going to make appointments as cabinet members. And I got a call, and basically it was, would you consider being, would you consider being a cabinet member, Secretary of Labor? And I was blown away, quite frankly. I was, I was humbled, I was honored. But I'll tell you what, I was also scared to death. <laughs> and I, I ended up visiting with him before, a week before he made the announcement. And he told me, point blank, Hilda, you've never overseen an agency with 15,000 people. How are you going to manage? And I told him, well, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to hire up the best people. I'm going to surround myself with people that are good. I'm going to weigh whatever evidence and information that I get. And I believe, as a woman, I've always had to prove myself three times out, because I looked younger, because I was minority, and because I come from a different area. All of those factors. And the minute I said that, his eyes lit up. And you know that big smile that he has. And he looked at his clock, his watch, and he said, well, I got to go home now. I have to uh, meet my, have dinner with my wife and my kids. I'll let you know. I'll make my decision tonight at 9 o'clock, and I'll let you know. And I thought, oh, I didn't do it. I messed up, because I've never had anyone tell me that in that manner. So the next day, I get a call, and they offer me the job. And that's a true story. So you just never know um, how, uh, 
how life will work its way out. But all I can tell you is uh, people will always tell you no. Or no, maybe not now, or maybe take time out, do something else. All I can tell you is if you stay focused and you really believe in yourself and you empower yourself and empower others, that will come back to you. And that has been one of the greatest gifts I think that I've been able to receive. And I hope I will continue to do that to empower other women, empower other people, men as well, and people that come from similar backgrounds like mine, to have that aspiration to do something in life and to be, to be satisfied and confident about it. Because confidence is one of the best things that any of you can have to be able to be successful to know what it is, to see that vision, to see it before you, and make it real for you. Those are very important things. And I thank God every single day for my parents because they had made a lot of sacrifices for me. And as a result of that, I'm proud to say that in my own family, I said I had seven siblings, five girls, two boys. Guess what? All the women got their university degrees. They went to UCLA, however. <laughs> but nonetheless, they're unstoppable. They're unstoppable. And two of them I'm very proud of because they're engineers. And when do, you, when do you always hear that women aren't good in math and science? You hear that subtly. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. Women can do just about anything. If given the right opportunity, the preparation, and choices, they can make a difference. We are, after all, 51% of the population. So. You need to be reminded of that, and we need to remind ourselves about that to empower women. I'm just delighted to be here to see so many of you. I'm glad 900 women came out. Um, next year, there'll be 1,500, <laughs> and some men sprinkled. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, it's really important for all of us to come together, because we're the county, and I know that there are uh, corporations and uh, entrepreneurs here and other folks that have come together and just want to say how proud uh, I am to be a part of the county family. Because when we lift one boat, we lift all of them. And that's what this is about, empowering women, empowering you in your jobs, promoting education, promoting goodwill, promoting career ladders, and promoting success. And especially for the people that you serve. Because this is about public service. It's the lives that you touch. It's the difference that you make when you talk to that resident, that constituent, or business person. So I'm reminded about that because I know how very important it is. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful conference.